In theoretical physics, Nordstrom's theory of gravitation was a predecessor of general relativity. Strictly speaking, there were actually two distinct theories proposed by the Finnish theoretical physicist Gunnar Nordström, in 1912 and 1913 respectively. The first was quickly dismissed, but the second became the first known example of a metric theory of gravitation, in which the effects of gravitation are treated entirely in terms of the geometry of a curved spacetime. Neither of Nordström's theories are in agreement with observation and experiment. Nonetheless, the first remains of interest insofar as it led to the second. The second remains of interest both as an important milestone on the road to the current theory of gravitation, general relativity, and as a simple example of a self-consistent relativistic theory of gravitation. As an example, this theory is particularly useful in the context of pedagogical discussions of how to derive and test the predictions of a metric theory of gravitation. Topic. Development of the theories Nordström's theories arose at a time when several leading physicists, including Nordström in Helsinki, Max Abraham in Milan, Gustav Mie in Greifswald, Germany, and Albert Einstein in Prague, were all trying to create competing relativistic theories of gravitation. All of these researchers began by trying to suitably modify the existing theory, the field theory version of Newton's theory of gravitation. In this theory, the field equation is the Poisson equation. Delta phi equals 4 pi rho. Display style delta phi equals 4 pi rho. Where phi Display style phi is the gravitational potential and rho display style rho is the density of matter, augmented by an equation of motion for a test particle in an ambient gravitational field, which we can derive from Newton's force law and which states that the acceleration of the test particle is given by the gradient of the potential d u d t equals minus phi display style frac d vec u dt equals nabla phi this theory is not relativistic because the equation of motion refers to coordinate time rather than proper time and because should the matter in some isolated object suddenly be redistributed by an explosion the field equation requires that the potential everywhere in space must be updated instantaneously, which violates the principle that any news which has a physical effect in this case, an effect on test particle motion far from the source of the field cannot be transmitted faster than the speed of light. Einstein's former calculus professor, Hermann Minkowski had sketched a vector theory of gravitation as early as 1908, but in 1912, Abraham pointed out that no such theory would admit stable planetary orbits. This was one reason why Nordstrom turned to scalar theories of gravitation, while Einstein explored tensor theories. Nordstrom's first attempt to propose a suitable relativistic scalar field equation of gravitation was the simplest and most natural choice imaginable, simply replace the Laplacian in the Newtonian field equation with the D'Alembertian or wave operator, which gives white medium square phi equals 4 Pi rho display style box phi equals four pi rho. This has the result of changing the vacuum field equation from the Laplace equation to the wave equation, which means that any news concerning redistribution of matter in one location is transmitted at the speed of light to other locations. Correspondingly, the simplest guess for a suitable equation of motion for test particles might seem to be u equals minus phi a display style dot u underscore a equals phi underscore a where the dot signifies differentiation with respect to proper time subscripts following the comma denote partial differentiation with respect to the index coordinate and where u a display style u caret a is the velocity four vector of the test particle 
This force law had earlier been proposed by Abraham, and Nordstrom knew that it wouldn't work. Instead he proposed U a equals minus phi a minus phi u a display style dot u underscore a equals phi underscore a dot phi u underscore a. However, this theory is unacceptable for a variety of reasons. Two objections are theoretical. First, this theory is not derivable from a Lagrangian, unlike the Newtonian field theory or most metric theories of gravitation. Second, the proposed field equation is linear. But by analogy with electromagnetism, we should expect the gravitational field to carry energy, and on the basis of Einstein's work on relativity theory, we should expect this energy to be equivalent to mass and therefore, to gravitate. This implies that the field equation should be nonlinear. Another objection is more practical, this theory disagrees drastically with observation. Einstein and von Lauer proposed that the problem might lie with the field equation, which, they suggested, should have the linear form f t m a t t e r equals rho display style ft underscore room matter equals rho where f is some yet unknown function of phi display style phi and where t matter is the trace of the stress energy tensor describing the density momentum and stress of any matter present in response to these criticisms nordstrom proposed his second theory in 1913 from the proportionality of inertial and gravitational mass, he deduced that the field equation should be phi white medium square phi equals minus 4 pi t m a t t e r Display style phi box phi equals minus four pi t underscore room matter, which is nonlinear. Nordstrom now took the equation of motion to be d phi u a d s equals minus phi. Display style frac d left phi u underscore a right d s equals phi underscore a or phi u a equals minus phi a minus phi u a Display style phi dot u underscore a equals phi underscore a dot phi u underscore a. Einstein took the first opportunity to proclaim his approval of the new theory. In a keynote address to the annual meeting of the Society of German Scientists and Physicians, given in Vienna on September 23, 1913, Einstein surveyed the state of the art, declaring that only his own work with Marcel Grossman and the second theory of Nordstrom were worthy of consideration. Me, who was in the audience, rose to protest, but Einstein explained his criteria and Me was forced to admit that his own theory did not meet them. Einstein considered the special case when the only matter present is a cloud of dust, that is, a perfect fluid in which the pressure is assumed to be negligible. He argued that the contribution of this matter to the stress energy tensor should be T M A T T E R A B equals Phi Rho U A U B Display style left T underscore room matter right underscore ab equals Phi Rho U underscore A U underscore B he then derived an expression for the stress energy tensor of the gravitational field in Nordstrom's second theory 4 pi t g r a v 
a b equals phi a phi b minus 1 2 eta a b phi m phi m Display style four pi left t underscore room grav right underscore ab equals phi underscore a phi underscore b minus one half eta underscore ab phi underscore m phi carrot m, which he proposed should hold in general, and showed that the sum of the contributions to the stress energy tensor from the gravitational field energy and from matter would be conserved, as should be the case. Furthermore, he showed, the field equation of Nordstrom's second theory follows from the Lagrangian L equals 1 8 pi eta a b phi a phi b minus rho phi Display style L equals frac one eight pi eta carrot ab phi underscore a phi underscore b rho phi. Since Nordstrom's equation of motion for test particles in an ambient gravitational field also follows from a Lagrangian, this shows that Nordstrom's second theory can be derived from an action principle and also shows that it obeys other properties we must demand from a self consistent field theory. Meanwhile, a gifted Dutch student, Adrian Fokker had written a PhD thesis under Hendrik Lorentz in which he derived what is now called the Fokker-Planck equation. Lorentz, delighted by his former student's success, arranged for Fokker to pursue postdoctoral study with Einstein in Prague. The result was a historic paper which appeared in 1914, in which Einstein and Fokker observed that the Lagrangian for Nordstrom's equation of motion for test particles L equals phi two eta a b u a u b display style l equals phi carrot two eta underscore ab dot u carrot a dot u carrot b is the geodesic Lagrangian for a curved Lorentzian manifold with metric tensor G A B equals phi two eta a b display style g underscore ab equals phi carrot two eta underscore ab. If we adopt Cartesian coordinates with line element d sigma two equals eta a b D X A D X B Display style D sigma carrot two equals eta underscore ab DX carrot a DX carrot B with corresponding wave operator white medium square Display style box on the flat background or Minkowski spacetime so that the line element of the curved spacetime is D S two equals phi two eta a b d x a d x b display style D S carrot two equals phi carrot two eta underscore ab D X carrot a D X carrot b then the Ricci scalar of this curved spacetime is just R equals minus six white medium square phi phi three display style R equals frac six box phi phi carrot three. Therefore, Nordstrom's field equation becomes simply R equals Twenty four Pi T Display style R equals twenty four Pi T 
where on the right hand side, we have taken the trace of the stress energy tensor with contributions from matter plus any non gravitational fields using the metric tensor G A B. Display style G underscore ab. This is a historic result because here, for the first time, we have a field equation in which, on the left-hand side, stands a purely geometrical quantity. The Ricci scalar is the trace of the Ricci tensor, which is itself a kind of trace of the fourth-rank Riemann curvature tensor, and on the right hand stands a purely physical quantity, the trace of the stress-energy tensor. Einstein gleefully pointed out that this equation now takes the form which he had earlier proposed with von Lauer, and gives a concrete example of a class of theories which he had studied with Grossman. Some time later, Hermann Weyl introduced the Weyl curvature tensor C A B C D which measures the deviation of a Lorentzian manifold from being conformally flat, i.e. with metric tensor having the form of the product of some scalar function with the metric tensor of flat spacetime. This is exactly the special form of the metric proposed in Nordstrom's second theory, so the entire content of this theory can be summarized in the following two equations. A equals 24 pi t C A B C D equals zero. Display style R equals twenty four pi T C underscore A B C D equals zero. Topic Features of Nordstrom's theory. Einstein was attracted to Nordstrom's second theory by its simplicity. The vacuum field equations in Nordstrom's theory are simply a equals zero c a b c d equals zero. Display style r equals zero c underscore a b c d equals zero. We can immediately write down the general vacuum solution in Nordstrom's theory. D S two equals exp two psi eta a b d x a d x b white medium square Psi equals zero. Display style ds caret two equals exp two psi eta underscore ab dx caret a dx caret b box psi equals zero. Where phi equals exp psi. Display style phi equals exp psi. And d sigma two equals eta a b d x a d x b display style d sigma carrot two equals eta underscore ab dx carrot a dx carrot b is the line element for flat spacetime in any convenient coordinate chart such as cylindrical, polar spherical, or double null coordinates, and where white medium square display style box is the ordinary wave operator on flat spacetime expressed in cylindrical, polar spherical, or double null coordinates, respectively, but the general solution of the ordinary three-dimensional wave equation is well known, and can be given rather explicit form. Specifically, for certain charts such as cylindrical or polar spherical charts on flat spacetime which induce corresponding charts on our curved Lorentzian manifold, we can write the general solution in terms of a power series, and we can write the general solution of certain Cauchy problems in the manner familiar from the leonard weakert potentials in electromagnetism. In any solution to Nordstrom's field equations vacuum or otherwise, if we consider psi 
display style psi as controlling a conformal perturbation from flat spacetime then to first order in psi display style psi we have d s 2 equals exp 2 psi eta a b d x a d x b approximately equals 1 plus 2 psi eta a b d x a d x b Display style DS carrot two equals EXP two psi eta underscore ab DX carrot a DX carrot B approximately one plus two psi eta underscore ab DX carrot a DX carrot B. Thus, in the weak field approximation, we can identify psi display style psi with the Newtonian gravitational potential, and we can regard it as controlling a small conformal perturbation from a flat spacetime background. In any metric theory of gravitation, all gravitational effects arise from the curvature of the metric. In a spacetime model in Nordstrom's theory but not in general relativity, this depends only on the trace of the stress-energy tensor. But the field energy of an electromagnetic field contributes a term to the stress energy tensor which is traceless, so in Nordstrom's theory, electromagnetic field energy does not gravitate. Indeed, since every solution to the field equations of this theory is a spacetime which is among other things conformally equivalent to flat spacetime, null geodesics must agree with the null geodesics of the flat background, so this theory can exhibit no light bending. Incidentally, the fact that the trace of the stress energy tensor for an electrovacuum solution, a solution in which there is no matter present, nor any non gravitational fields except for an electromagnetic field, vanishes shows that in the general electrovacuum solution in Nordstrom's theory, the metric tensor has the same form as in a vacuum solution, so we need only write down and solve the curved spacetime Maxwell field equations. But these are conformally invariant, so we can also write down the general electrovacuum solution, say in terms of a power series. In any Lorentzian manifold with appropriate tensor fields describing any matter and physical fields which stands as a solution to Nordstrom's field equations, the conformal part of the Riemann tensor i.e. the Weyl tensor always vanishes. The Ricci scalar also vanishes identically in any vacuum region or even, any region free of matter but containing an electromagnetic field. Are there any further restrictions on the Riemann tensor in Nordstrom's theory? To find out, note that an important identity from the theory of manifolds, the Ricci decomposition, splits the Riemann tensor into three pieces, which are each fourth-ranked tensors, built out of, respectively, the Ricci scalar, the trace-free Ricci tensor, S A B equals R A B minus one four R G A B Display style S underscore ab equals R underscore ab frac one four R G underscore ab and the Weyl tensor. It immediately follows that Nordstrom's theory leaves the trace-free Ricci tensor entirely unconstrained by algebraic relations other than the symmetric property, which this second-ranked tensor always enjoys. But taking account of the twice-contracted and detraced Bianchi identity, a differential identity which holds for the Riemann tensor in any semi Riemannian manifold, we see that in Nordstrom's theory, as a consequence of the field equations, we have the first-order covariant differential equation S A B B equals six Pi T A Display style S underscore a carrot B underscore B equals six Pi T underscore a which constrains the semi traceless part of the Riemann tensor, the one built out of the trace free Ricci tensor. 
Thus, according to Nordstrom's theory, in a vacuum region only the semi-traceless part of the Riemann tensor can be non-vanishing. Then our covariant differential constraint on S A B display style S underscore ab shows how variations in the trace of the stress energy tensor in our spacetime model can generate a non-zero trace free Ricci tensor and thus non-zero semi-traceless curvature which can propagate into a vacuum region this is critically important because otherwise gravitation would not according to this theory be a long range force capable of propagating through a vacuum in general relativity, something somewhat analogous happens, but there it is the Ricci tensor which vanishes in any vacuum region but not in a region which is matter-free but contains an electromagnetic field, and it is the Weyl curvature which is generated via another first-order covariant differential equation by variations in the stress-energy tensor and which then propagates into vacuum regions, rendering gravitation a long-range force capable of propagating through a vacuum. We can tabulate the most basic differences between Nordstrom's theory and general relativity, as follows. Another feature of Nordstrom's theory is that it can be written as the theory of a certain scalar field in Minkowski spacetime, and in this form enjoys the expected conservation law for non-gravitational mass energy together with gravitational field energy, but suffers from a not very memorable force law. In the curved spacetime formulation the motion of test particles is described the world line of a free test particle is a timelike geodesic, and by an obvious limit, the world line of a laser pulse is a null geodesic, but we lose the conservation law. So which interpretation is correct? In other words, which metric is the one which according to Nordstrom can be measured locally by physical experiments? The answer is, the curved spacetime is the physically observable one in this theory as in all metric theories of gravitation, the flat background is a mere mathematical fiction which is however of inestimable value for such purposes as writing down the general vacuum solution, or studying the weak field limit. At this point, we could show that in the limit of slowly moving test particles and slowly evolving weak gravitational fields, Nordstrom's theory of gravitation reduces to the Newtonian theory of gravitation. Rather than showing this in detail, we will proceed to a detailed study of the two most important solutions in this theory. The spherically symmetric static asymptotically flat vacuum solutions. The general vacuum gravitational plane wave solution in this theory, we will use the first to obtain the predictions of Nordstrom's theory for the four classic solar system tests of relativistic gravitation theories in the ambient field of an isolated spherically symmetric object, and we will use the second to compare gravitational radiation in Nordstrom's theory and in Einstein's general theory of relativity. The static spherically symmetric asymptotically flat vacuum solution The static vacuum solutions in Nordstrom's theory are the Lorentzian manifolds with metrics of the form d s 2 equals exp 2 psi eta a b D x a d x b delta psi equals zero. Display style d s caret two equals exp two psi eta underscore ab d x caret a d x caret b delta psi equals zero, where we can take the flat spacetime Laplace operator on the right. To first order in psi display style psi the metric becomes d s 2 equals 1 plus 2 psi eta a b d x a d X B display style ds caret two equals one plus two psi eta underscore ab dx caret a dx caret b where eta a b d x 
a d x b display style a to underscore ab dx caret a dx caret b is the metric of Minkowski spacetime, the flat background. Topic: The metric. Adopting polar spherical coordinates, and using the known spherically symmetric asymptotically vanishing solutions of the Laplace equation, we can write the desired exact solution as d s 2 equals 1 minus m rho minus d t 2 plus D Rho two plus Rho two D theta two plus sin theta two D Phi two Display style ds carrot two equals one m row left dt carrot two plus d row carrot two plus row carrot two d theta carrot two plus sin theta carrot two d phi carrot two right, where we justify our choice of integration constants by the fact that this is the unique choice giving the correct Newtonian limit. This gives the solution in terms of coordinates which directly exhibit the fact that this spacetime is conformally equivalent to Minkowski spacetime, but the radial coordinate in this chart does not readily admit a direct geometric interpretation. Therefore, we adopt instead Schwartz's child coordinates, using the transformation r equals rho 1 minus m, rho display style r equals rho 1 m, rho, which brings the metric into the form ds2 equals 1 plus m, r minus 2 minus dt2 plus dr2 plus r2 d theta 2 plus sin theta 2 d phi 2 display style ds caret 2 equals 1 plus m, r caret minus 2 dt caret 2 plus dr caret 2 plus R carrot two D theta carrot two plus sin theta carrot two D phi carrot two minus infinity T infinity zero R infinity zero theta pi minus pi phi Pi display style inf t here R now has the simple geometric interpretation that the surface area of the coordinate sphere R equals R zero display style R equals R underscore zero is just four pi R o two display style four pi R underscore zero carrot two. Just as happens in the corresponding static spherically symmetric asymptotically flat solution of general relativity, this solution admits a four-dimensional Lie group of isometries, or equivalently, a four-dimensional Lie algebra of killing vector fields. These are readily determined to be t translation in time phi Rotation about an axis through the origin minus cos phi theta plus cot theta sin phi phi display style cos phi partial underscore theta plus cot theta sin phi partial underscore phi sin phi theta plus cot theta cos phi phi display style sin phi partial underscore theta plus cot theta cos phi partial underscore phi these are exactly the same vector fields which arise in the Schwarzschild coordinate chart for the Schwarzschild vacuum solution of general relativity, and they simply express the fact that this spacetime is static and spherically symmetric. Topic: <laughs> Geodesics. The geodesic equations are readily obtained from the geodesic Lagrangian. As always, these are second-order nonlinear ordinary differential equations. If we set theta equals pi two 
Display style theta equals pi two. We find that test particle motion confined to the equatorial plane is possible, and in this case, first integrals, first order ordinary differential equations, are readily obtained. First, we have t equals e one plus m r two approximately equals e one plus two m r Display style dot t equals e left one plus m r right carrot two approximately e left one plus two meters r right, where to first order in m we have the same result as for the Schwarzschild vacuum. This also shows that Nordstrom's theory agrees with the result of the Pound-Rebka experiment. Second, we have phi equals l r two display style dot phi equals l r caret 2 which is the same result as for the Schwarzschild vacuum this expresses conservation of orbital angular momentum of test particles moving in the equatorial plane and shows that the period of a nearly circular orbit as observed by a distant observer will be same as for the Schwarzschild vacuum third with e equals minus 1 0 one display style epsilon equals minus one zero one for time like null space like geodesics we find r two one plus m r four equals e two minus v Display style frac dot r carrot two left one plus m r right carrot four equals e carrot two v, where v equals l two r two minus e one plus m r two Display style v equals frac l caret two r caret two epsilon left one plus m r right caret two is a kind of effective potential. In the time-like case, we see from this that there exist stable circular orbits at r c equals l two m. Display style r underscore c equals l caret two per meter which agrees perfectly with Newtonian theory if we ignore the fact that now the angular but not the radial distance interpretation of R agrees with flat space notions. In contrast, in the Schwarzschild vacuum we have to first order in M the expression R C approximately equals L 2 M minus 3 M Display style r underscore c approximately l caret two per meter to three meters. In a sense, the extra term here results from the nonlinearity of the vacuum Einstein field equation. Topic: Static observers. It makes sense to ask how much force is required to hold a test particle with a given mass over the massive object which we assume is the source of this static spherically symmetric gravitational field. To find out, we need only adopt the simple frame field E 0 equals 1 plus m r t Display style VEC E underscore zero equals left one plus M R right partial underscore T E one equals one plus M R R Display style VEC E underscore one equals left one plus M R right partial underscore R E two equals 1 r 
theta display style vec e underscore two equals frac one r partial underscore theta e three equals one r sin theta phi display style vec e underscore three equals frac one r sin theta partial underscore phi then the acceleration of the world line of our test particle is simply e 0 e 0 equals m r 2 e 2 display style nabla underscore vec e underscore 0 vec e underscore 0 equals frac m r caret 2 vec e underscore 2 thus the particle must maintain radially outward to maintain its position with a magnitude given by the familiar newtonian expression but again we must bear in mind that the radial coordinate here cannot quite be identified with a flat space radial coordinate put in other words this is the gravitational acceleration", measured by a static observer who uses a rocket engine to maintain his position. In contrast, to second order in M, in the Schwarzschild vacuum the magnitude of the radially outward acceleration of a static observer is m r minus 2 plus m squared r minus 3. Here too, the second term expresses the fact that Einstein gravity is slightly stronger at corresponding points than Nordstrom gravity. The tidal tensor measured by a static observer is E x A B equals M R three D I A G minus two one one plus M Two R four D I A G minus one 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 Display style VEC x underscore ab equals frac m r carrot three room diag minus two one one plus frac m carrot two r carrot four room diag minus one 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 where we take x equals e zero display style vec x equals vec e underscore zero. The first term agrees with the corresponding solution in the Newtonian theory of gravitation and the one in general relativity. The second term shows that the tidal forces are a bit stronger in Nordstrom gravity than in Einstein gravity. Topic: Extra Newtonian precession of periastria. In our discussion of the geodesic equations, we showed that in the equatorial coordinate plane, theta equals pi two. Display style theta equals pi two. We have r two equals e. 2 minus v 1 plus m r 4 display style dot r caret 2 equals e caret 2 v 1 plus m r caret 4 where v equals 1 plus l 2 r 2 1 plus m r 2 display style v equals 1 plus l caret 2 r caret 2 1 plus m r caret 2 for a time like geodesic differentiating with respect to proper time s we obtain 2 r r equals d D R E two minus V one 
plus m r 4 r display style 2 dot r d d o t r equals frac d doctor left e caret 2 v 1 plus m r caret 4 right dot r dividing both sides by r display style dot r gives r equals 1 2 d d r E two minus V one plus M R four Display style D D O T R equals frac one two frac D doctor left E carrot two V one plus M R carrot four right We found earlier that the minimum of V occurs at R C equals L two M display style R underscore C equals L carrot two per meter where E C equals L two L two plus M two Display style e underscore c equals l caret two l caret two plus m caret two. Evaluating the derivative using our earlier results and setting epsilon equals r minus l two m two. Display style var epsilon equals r l caret two per meter caret two. We find epsilon equals minus m four l eight m two plus l two epsilon plus o epsilon two Display style D D O T var epsilon equals frac M carrot four L carrot eight M carrot two plus L carrot two var epsilon plus O var epsilon carrot two which is to first order the equation of simple harmonic motion. In other words, nearly circular orbits will exhibit a radial oscillation. However, unlike what happens in Newtonian gravitation, the period of this oscillation will not quite match the orbital period. This will result in slow precession of the periastria points of closest approach of our nearly circular orbit, or more vividly, in a slow rotation of the long axis of a quasi-Keplerian nearly elliptical orbit. Specifically, omega s h m approximately equals m 2 l 4 m 2 plus l 2 equals 1 r 2 m 2 plus m r Display style omega underscore room shm approximately frac m carrot two l carrot four sqrt m carrot two plus l carrot two equals frac one r carrot two sqrt m carrot two plus m r, where we used l equals m r. Display style l equals sqrt mister, and removed the subscript from r c display style r underscore c whereas omega o r b equals l r 2 equals m r 3 Display style omega underscore room orb equals frac l r caret two equals sqrt m r caret three. The discrepancy is delta omega equals 
omega o r b minus omega s h m equals m r 3 minus m 2 r 4 plus m r 3 approximately equals minus 1 2 m 3 r 5 Display style delta omega equals omega underscore room or omega underscore room shm equals sqrt frac m r carrot three sqrt frac m carrot two r carrot four plus frac m r carrot three approximately frac one two sqrt frac m carrot three r carrot five. So the periastrion lag per orbit is delta phi equals Two pi delta omega approximately equals minus pi m three r five display style delta phi equals two pi delta omega approximately pi sqrt frac m caret three r caret five and to first order in m the long axis of the nearly elliptical orbit rotates with the rate delta phi omega o r b approximately equals minus pi m r display style frac delta phi omega underscore room or approximately frac pi m r this can be compared with the corresponding expression for the Schwarzschild vacuum solution in general relativity, which is to first order in m delta phi omega o r b approximately equals six pi m r Display style frac delta phi omega underscore room orb approximately frac six pi m r. Thus, in Nordstrom's theory, if the nearly elliptical orbit is transversed counterclockwise, the long axis slowly rotates clockwise, whereas in general relativity, it rotates counterclockwise six times faster. In the first case, we may speak of a periastrion lag, and in the second case, a periastrion advance. In either theory, with more work, we can derive more general expressions, but we shall be satisfied here with treating the special case of nearly circular orbits. For example, according to Nordstrom's theory, the perihelia of Mercury should lag at a rate of about 7 seconds of arc per century, whereas according to general relativity, the perihelia should advance at a rate of about 43 seconds of arc per century. Topic: Light delay. Null geodesics in the equatorial plane of our solution satisfy zero equals minus d t two plus d r two one plus m r Two plus R two D Phi two Display style zero equals frac DT carrot two plus DR carrot two one plus M R carrot two plus R carrot two D Phi carrot two Consider two events on a null geodesic, before and after its point of closest approach to the origin. Let these distances be R one R R two display style R underscore one R R underscore two with R one R two R 
display style r underscore one r underscore two g g r. We wish to eliminate phi display style phi. So put r equals r cos phi display style r equals r cos phi. The equation of a straight line in polar coordinates and differentiate to obtain zero equals minus r sin phi d phi plus cos phi d r Display style zero equals r sin phi d phi plus cos phi doctor. Thus, r two d phi two equals cot phi two d r two equals r two r Two minus R two D R two Display style R carrot two D Phi carrot two equals cot Phi carrot two Doctor carrot two equals frac R carrot two R carrot two R carrot two Doctor carrot two Plugging this into the line element and so L Ving for DT we obtain D T approximately equals one R two minus R two R plus M R two R two D R Display style dt approximately frac one sqrt r carrot two r carrot two left r plus m frac r carrot two r carrot two right doctor. Thus, the coordinate time from the first event to the event of closest approach is delta t one equals r r one d t approximately equals m plus r 1 r 1 r 1 2 minus r 2 equals r 1 2 minus r 2 plus m 1 minus r r 1 2 Display style delta t underscore one equals int underscore r carrot r underscore one d t approximately frac m plus r underscore one r underscore one sqrt r underscore one carrot two r carrot two equals sqrt r underscore one carrot two r carrot two plus m sqrt one r r underscore one carrot two and likewise delta t Two equals R R two D T approximately equals M plus R two R two R two two minus R two equals R two two minus R two plus M one minus R R two two D 
Display style delta t underscore two equals int underscore r carrot r underscore two d t approximately frac m plus r underscore two r underscore two s q r t r underscore two carrot two r carrot two equals s q r t r underscore two carrot two r carrot two plus m s q r t one r r underscore two carrot two here the elapsed coordinate time expected from Newtonian theory is of course r 1 2 minus r 2 plus r 2 2 minus r 2 Display style SQRT R underscore one carrot two R carrot two plus SQRT R underscore two carrot two R carrot two. So the relativistic time delay, according to Nordstrom's theory, is Delta T equals M one minus R R one two plus 1 minus r r 2 2 display style delta t equals m left sqrt 1 r r underscore 1 carrot 2 plus sqrt 1 r r underscore 2 carrot 2 right to first order in the small ratios r r 1 R R two display style R R underscore one R R underscore two. This is just delta T equals two m display style delta T equals two meters. The corresponding result in general relativity is delta T equals 2 m plus 2 m log 4 r 1 r 2 r 2 Display style delta t equals two meters plus two meters log left frac 4 r underscore 1 r underscore 2 r carrot 2 right which depends logarithmically on the small ratios r r 1 r r 2 display style r r underscore 1 r r underscore 2 for example in the classic experiment in which at a time when as viewed from earth venus is just about to pass behind the sun a radar signal emitted from earth which grazes the limb of the sun bounces off venus and returns to earth once again grazing the limb of the sun the relativistic time delay is about 20 microseconds according to nordstrom's theory and about 240 microseconds according to general relativity Topic. Summary of results We can summarize the results we found above in the following table, in which the given expressions represent appropriate approximations The last four lines in this table list the so-called four classic solar system tests of relativistic theories of gravitation. Of the three theories appearing in the table, only general relativity is in agreement with the results of experiments and observations in the solar system. Nordstrom's theory gives the correct result only for the pound rebka experiment. Not surprisingly, Newton's theory flunks all four relativistic tests. Topic vacuum gravitational plane wave in the double null chart for Minkowski spacetime, ds2 equals 2 du dv plus dx2 plus dy2, minus infinity u, v, x, y infinity display style ds2 equals 2, du, dv plus dx2 plus dy2, inf t a simple solution of the wave equation 2 psi uv plus psi xx plus psi yy equals 0 display style 2, psi underscore uv plus psi Psi underscore xx plus psi underscore yy equals zero is psi equals f u display style psi equals f u where f is an arbitrary smooth function. 
This represents a plane wave traveling in the z-direction. Therefore, Nordstrom's theory admits the exact vacuum solution ds2 equals exp 2 f u 2 du dv plus dx2 plus dy2 minus infinity u v x y infinity display style ds caret 2 equals exp 2 f u left 2 du dv plus dx caret 2 plus dy caret 2 right inf t, which we can interpret in terms of the propagation of a gravitational plane wave. This Lorentzian manifold admits a six-dimensional Lie group of isometries, or equivalently, a six-dimensional Lie algebra of killing vector fields v v a null translation opposing the wave vector field u x y Display style partial underscore x partial underscore y spatial translation orthogonal to the wavefronts minus y x plus x y display style y partial underscore x plus x partial underscore y rotation about axis parallel to direction of propagation x V plus U X Y V plus U Y display style X partial underscore V plus U partial underscore X Y partial underscore V plus U partial underscore Y for example the killing vector field X V plus u x display style x partial underscore v plus u partial underscore x integrates to give the one parameter family of isometries u v x y u v plus x lambda plus U two Lambda two X plus U Lambda Y Display style U V X Y long right arrow U V plus X Lambda plus frac U two Lambda carrot two X plus U Lambda Y just as in special relativity and general relativity, it is always possible to change coordinates, without disturbing the form of the solution, so that the wave propagates in any direction transverse to z Note that our isometry group is transitive on the hypersurfaces u equals u 0 Display style u equals u underscore zero. In contract, the generic gravitational plane wave in general relativity has only a five-dimensional Lie group of isometries. In both theories, special plane waves may have extra symmetries. We'll say a bit more about why this is so in a moment. Adopting the frame field e zero equals one two v plus exp minus 2 f u display style vec e underscore 0 equals frac 1 sqrt 2 left partial underscore v plus exp 2 f partial underscore u right e 1 equals 1 2 V minus exp minus two f u display style vec e underscore one equals frac one sqrt two left partial underscore v exp two f partial underscore u right e two equals x Display style VEC E underscore two equals partial underscore X E 
3 equals y display style vec e underscore 3 equals partial underscore y we find that the corresponding family of test particles are inertial freely falling since the acceleration vector vanishes e 0 e 0 equals 0 display style nabla underscore vec e underscore 0 vec e underscore 0 equals 0 Notice that if f vanishes, this family becomes a family of mutually stationary test particles in flat Minkowski spacetime. With respect to the timelike geodesic congruence of world lines obtained by integrating the timelike unit vector field, x equals e zero. Display style vec x equals vec e underscore zero. The expansion tensor theta x p caret q caret equals 1 2 f u exp minus 2 f u d i a g 0 1 1 display style theta vec x underscore hat p hat q equals frac 1 sqrt 2 f u exp minus 2 f u room diag 0 1 1 shows that our test particles are expanding or contracting isotropically and transversely to the direction of propagation this is exactly what we would expect for a transverse spin zero wave, the behavior of analogous families of test particles which encounter a gravitational plane wave in general relativity is quite different, because these are spin two waves. This is due to the fact that Nordstrom's theory of gravitation is a scalar theory, whereas Einstein's theory of gravitation general relativity is a tensor theory. On the other hand, gravitational waves in both theories are transverse waves. Electromagnetic plane waves are of course also transverse. The tidal tensor E x P carrot Q carrot equals one two EXP minus four F U F U Two minus F U D I A G zero one one Display style e vec x underscore hat p hat q equals frac one two exp minus four f u left f u carrot two f u right room diag zero one one further exhibits the spin zero character of the gravitational plane wave in Nordstrom's theory. The tidal tensor and expansion tensor are three-dimensional tensors which live in the hyperplane elements orthogonal to E zero display style vec e underscore zero, which in this case happens to be a rotational, so we can regard these tensors as defined on orthogonal hyperslices. The exact solution we are discussing here, which we interpret as a propagating gravitational plane wave, gives some basic insight into the propagation of gravitational radiation in Nordstrom's theory, but it does not yield any insight into the generation of gravitational radiation in this theory. At this point, it would be natural to discuss the analog for Nordstrom's theory of gravitation of the standard linearized gravitational wave theory in general relativity, but we shall not pursue this. Topic. See also Classical theories of gravitation Congruence general relativity Gunnar Nordström Obsolete physical theories General theory of relativity